Hi, everybody, and welcome back to our podcast from the Kama Sutra to 2020, where we look at your questions, your concerns, even your worries around all things to do with sex and sexuality. As always, we have with us Dr. Anvita Madan Behel. Anvita is a psychosexual therapist, and she brings the psychological perspective to the advice that the Kama Sutra has to give. But along with her today, we also have a very special guest. We have Sharif Rangnaker with us. Sharif um, is the director for the very first queer and inclusive lit fest in India, the Rainbow Literature Festival. Sharif is an author. He's a communications expert. He is an expert on workplace culture, and he's an advocate for the LGBTQ community. Welcome, Sharif. Welcome, Anvita. Thank you, Seema, and welcome to our podcast this week. Thank you. Thank you for having me. It's great to be here. Um, Sharif, today we have a question that um, came in to us last week, and it actually brought a tear to our eyes. I mean, it actually made me cry a little bit. And I felt that we really, really needed you on this panel to deal with this. So the question was from a young gay man who said that not only is he looking for help and support in trying to come out and in basically trying to live his new life as a gay person, but the fact that he is trying to deal with fear and self-hatred based around this new identity of his every single day. And we realized Anvita does a lot of work on homosexuality. I am a huge advocate for um, the, the uh, you know, for basically um, all sorts of sexual orientations. But I have to say that this kind of put a whole new light on something, because even though we are there trying to be as supportive as possible, you realize that this is a journey that has far deeper layers and needs a whole different type of support. And I know that it's something that you touched upon in your book, which is called From Straight to Normal, where you talk about facing self-hatred, facing the fear, facing your depression about being gay. Yes, Seema, it's, uh, you know, uh, sometimes you feel uh, so much has changed uh, you know, from the time I came out, which was 1999, but I was 30 years old when I came out. Uh, yeah, you feel that a lot may have changed, you know, given that that was over 20 years ago. And then you hear these kind of stories, uh, you hear it from various people, uh, you know, the people who want to end their lives. Um, you know, there isn't, a, there isn't a specific answer to this. Uh, or, but I, I, I feel that today people are better off in terms of accessing information, accessing support groups, etc. But I'll just come to a point: what, what does someone really go through in a situation like this? Everything around you is heterosexual or heteronormative or heterodominated. When you look around and you see TV and you see romantic films, you know, so to say, it's always a heterosexual couple. When you look up your parents, they're obviously a heterosexual couple. When you look at the press and they tell you, you know, stories of love, it's again that. So you go to school, people talk about, you know, uh, boys talk about the girls they like, the girls talk about the boys who are looking at them or who they like. So there isn't a space for you. I mean, you just don't seem to fit in anywhere. And that leads to just so much of self-doubt. You know, at one hand, you want to accept that you're different. On the other hand, you feel that that difference is completely out of place. It has absolutely uh, no dignity whatsoever in society because no one talks about it. There is, if the people talk about it, by and large, you hear jokes where you're the part of the joke. When you've seen caricaturization in cinema, you seem again to be some kind of uh, thing or uh, person to mock at, to laugh at. There isn't any status, there isn't any dignity, you know, there's no self-respect. In a situation like that, it is 
it's only a few who can completely shut that whole world out and be themselves. And even if they can, I know it during the pandemic as well, during the lockdown, that many people who went through this kind of self-doubt, hate towards themselves, isolated in rooms because they have just come out to their parents and the parents hadn't accepted them. There were others who, uh, who, who uh, were just getting into that journey of accepting themselves, but they have no space to go to, no place to go to, etc. So there were few, I think, who've tried to kind of meditate in a way to, to, to look at themselves, uh, you know, and, uh, you know, perhaps as, as one mental health expert was telling me, because we were on a panel discussing this on TV uh, in May, uh, what they call a certain kind of mindfulness towards yourself, you know, uh, accepting, starting to look at what you like, what colors you like, what kind of person uh, that you desire for, what do you want to, want to wear, you know, and use the little private space that you have, you know, whether it's in the toilet, whether it's in your bedroom, to try and explore those things so that you can start, you know, creating your own little world out there. But obviously that's not a permanent solution. That is just no way because you can't live in a toilet in a room. Uh, so all I can tell people and anyone is that uh, start reading more, start reaching out on Instagram, for example. There are a dime and dozen really, really good mental health support groups to reach out to. If not anything else, you'll get someone, you'll connect with someone who's so much like you to just tell you that things are fine the way they are, you know, uh, and, and there isn't anything wrong. And I don't know whether it's easy, Seema, for anyone to get rid of that hate and doubt that we carry, you know, completely. And maybe I'm taking a little long, but I was, I, I was telling you that when it was after I came out of this book and I was 50 plus, that actually someone who knew me when I had first got into a gay group meeting, uh, Salim Kitwai, he said that this book, this story and the stage of where I am was a coming of age, which meant I spent over 20 years to come to terms with my sexuality to the, exist, to, 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 to the point where nothing else mattered or what the young today call self-love, you know, that it took me those many years to actually love myself for who I am. So I think that's what happens to a lot of people. And, and I, just, I just pray and hope that there are less and less such cases in this world, you know, of people having to hate themselves. Really, I know what's it like. And with that, I know that you had something very similar that you were talking about last time, weren't you? You were saying about how we don't have any examples of gay couples being together. So where do you go to? Yeah. But, you know, hearing Sri talk about a lot of the personal experiences, I really want people to hear how it is a lifelong journey. Like research now speaks about this idea called internalized homophobia. And that's what yeah. Sharif is talking about in some ways, which is basically that we grow up in the same society. So what we are watching, you know, all Bollywood movies, the gay person is the comic relief in some ways, you know, that is the person that is ridiculous. To see yourself in those shoes is a scary thing. To actually undo all those stereotypes or those jokes and everything actually takes a really long time, you know, because we grow up in the same society, we have the same stereotypes, we believe in the same things, we believe in all these heteronormative things, we've grown up, you know, speaking about marriage and heterosexual couples and seeing our parents and all of that. So it is actually quite normal to have that, you know, when you start thinking, oh, I might be attracted to the same sex person, you suddenly have to undo all those stereotypes. So it is quite normal to have that 
self hatred in in the beginning because it's scary it's confusing um it it's so hard uh, and a lot of times we have seen that people actually become very overtly homophobic because they're so scared that they'll be found out that somebody will find out that inside they're actually considering that idea and somewhere they feel like they are just transparent and people can look through their inner world um and it and so it just speaks to what sharif was saying about how it's not easy as one day oh i just feel gay and i'm out it is such a complex and difficult journey um and it's a journey where there's no support there's no sex education there is no oh i would just go to speak to a friend about it because coming and speaking to a friend is a coming out process which is also so difficult right so it is just one of the hardest things to do uh, and as sure you said the, one of the best way to get is find support find support from people who've gone through the journey before um and find support groups it could be online it could be in person your wherever you're living there will be a group available or if not there are groups available online that you should seek so i Amita, think i just um, want to i want to say one thing Sina, sorry yeah on the point that anvita was just making this whole thing of internalized homophobia it comes to a point that i mean it didn't i mean there was a point that i i wanted to you know end my life but that time i had no clue as to why but i know enough that more people who don't want to be gay and, you know and i don't know whether you call it internalized homophobia it is just the whole fact that you feel left out uh, uh you've seen the 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 hatred when uh sexuality is discussed at the table at 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 certain homes where people are so called educated and supposedly aware where they were also discussing 377 and when it was read down in 2009 and then again in 2018 uh and uh, you know they they say that you know I want to be loved so I don't want to be gay I I I want I want to be like my brother like my sister like my cousin who are heterosexual the you do have people the 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 fear is so high that you actually don't want to be yourself anymore because you 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 don't want to face that violence you don't want to be uh hated you don't you don't want uh your parents uh to differentiate and you know uh uh kind of not love you you know you, that that's what people go through and it is that leads to the fear that leads to the fear of coming out that leads to the fear of recognizing who you are you know in in, in your fullest yeah. form it it and it's something that anvita also said the other day which made a lot of sense that not only is this such a deep fear and the thing is that you know we are over here trying to say okay we support you through this really deep fear we're here by your side but it's not just that one off it's every day you face that fear like anvita was saying every morning you get up and you face the same fear you may have met somebody today who says everything is going to be all right it's fine we're here the next morning you wake up and the same fear comes up and sharif i know that you been went through this journey this is something that you faced personally how did you deal with this every single morning every day or can well, you know, to do it every day in some because yeah, it's a so, lifelong journey So you know uh Seema and Mita I think I am so lucky I mean in a way I used to regret uh, at a point coming out quite late in my in terms of my age and I spoke to my godmother who is Chitra and she says well you know certain things happen in time look at it that 1999 is still better than 1989 as just as an example you know what the world was like then So in that sense I was lucky that I came out at a period where we at least had certain group meetings taking place and uh, uh within my own residential complex uh, I live in with Nas Foundation was a meeting place so I had a space to go to but it was after I came out and you know I'm lucky that I had a mom uh a mother who looked at each one of us each three I mean three brothers 
each of us are very, very different people, very different people. And, and so I would like to just quote her here. She loves plants and she loves, uh, we have a whole terrace full of plants. And she said that to her children are like plants. Some of them require shade at a certain point. Some of them need to be put out in the sun. Some of them need more water, some need less water, some need a different kind of soil, different kind of nourishment, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But they choose how to bloom, how to grow on their own. What she as a gardener needs to do is ensure they're well nurtured and they're looked up. So her approach to the three of us was that. And in a way it was a certain amount of ignorance of sexuality and sexual orientation, which was great because she just took me for who I am and didn't slot me into being a homosexual or being a heterosexual or being a boy or being a girl, you know? Uh, she didn't do any of those things. So in a way, home became extremely safe. It is just that she asked me questions that I couldn't answer at that point because she was curious to understand me better understand homosexuality better. But when I came out to her, I was hardly a month, month and a half into gay group meetings. I knew nothing. For me, it was just meeting other gay men was the, the first steps. That was the excitement was about meeting other men. You know, It wasn't about trying to figure out uh, the various nomenclatures attached to behavior, to choices and all. I, I didn't know all of that. I mean, that's taken a long time to understand, no. And nowadays there are anyway new words, you know, pronouns and there's so much more out there. Uh, but it was when I had to step out of home that there was always this conflict. The moment I got into my car, the moment I was on the street, the moment I went to office, even when I was the CEO of a company, there is this assumption that you hold in a power structure, you're at the top, you're secure, mm. you know? In a way you are, you know, in many ways you are, but I wasn't secure because I did face a campaign of someone who knew about my sexuality and he's, he, he sort of put me out there across the staff, including the support staff, the receptionist and the rest sending messages. It wasn't WhatsApp, so he couldn't send so many messages at the same time, it was text messages was there. Uh, but, you know, it, th these, these areas were always spaces where I was constantly holding back. I was constantly uh, trying to be the straight acting guy, a corporate fellow, uh, you know, uh, the sahib, because when you have a driver and you're paying in, in, in cities like Delhi and you're paying him the salary or the boss, your sahib. So I had to be the sahib, uh, I could never uh, I, I, I was, it, it took me a while to explain to other people why I like to drive in the evening because that's the little time that if I was on a date or meeting someone, I could actually completely be free in my car with the other person. Otherwise, I'm constantly on guard. Go to a family function, you're on guard. So you're leaving, leaving two lives, you know, on a, uh, on a continuous basis, you know, and... Uh, but, you know, like while Shakespeare says life is a stage, uh, you know, and they're all actors and whatever the exact line is, but you can't be doing so many roles at the same time. You know, uh, it's fine, you know, when people can shoot different shots at different points. But the moment I walk out of my home, the moment I walk into my home, I'm, I'm constantly, it's like day and night, you know? And... Uh, and you know, dusk oh, and dawn has its beauty. That sounds. It's very exhausting. It took so much of a toll. I didn't realize it, Seema. And I can't imagine. Oh, Sharif. I can't imagine when I get calls from people that that they have to so many years later go through such things where you have to perpetually act. I used to joke in office when things became a little more open at work, at the workplace uh, uh, that, uh, you know, post 2009, because everyone was talking about 377, so we could discuss it at work. Uh, 
that uh, you know in public relations you're always you there is a facade uh, there is a politically correct behavior there is certain things you say to your client certain things you don't say to your client you're constantly performing in front of a client in front of the press in front of all these stakeholders i said that i have become an actor because mm-hmm. i'm doing it all the time but i'm doing the director's role with pressure from the world around me and i'm doing the script i'm the script writer because i i need to know what i say and what i don't i decide what i wear and what i don't this is what everyone wants to see i'm doing the costume designing therefore i i, I do the makeup because then i uh, you know i don't have to show everything uh, to the world uh, uh, when i want to cry i cry in private because that's not what the, what people want to see because they won't understand so uh so it was it's it was really really exhausting mm. and and you know it's I, i wouldn't wish that on anyone you know i wouldn't wish wish that on anyone that they have to constantly do this you know it's enough to be a son a brother a partner a cousin etc etc mm. you know but it is too much to be so many different things so many different roles that you have to play which are not natural to the existence of a so called loving family structure and society you know it it's just not worth it and i think you're really speaking to the lack of safety you know it is the lack of safety every day that one really needs to hear there that, that and the lack of choice that you cannot decide somebody else can just tell whoever they want to tell about an identity that you're really protecting how important it is but one fine day somebody can just spread it out to 50 people and that then you have to deal with the consequences of that you know when the receptionist finds out when she looks at you can you really have a conversation with her what that does to your life the turmoil um, and that lack of choice and powerlessness you know that's what we're speak- speaking about how difficult it is in some ways uh, because you don't have control over it uh, and that process of not having control just living in that uncertainty can be so you know emotionally difficult for everyone yeah and anita i mean you know like uh, there are many cases even today where uh, i i met this young a uh, professional who was uh, attached to one of the consulting big consulting firms and he was placed with a public sector undertaking company where everything was masculine the team he was engaging with a typical alpha male lot of people and he went through so much trauma and he was based in chandigarh that he traveled down to Uh, an event in bangalore organized by pride circle for the lgbtq job fair something that we would never have heard of until the last year two years and he met me my hair standing up and he started howling he had never seen he had never been to a conference where there was sexuality and safety or as you just said safety was being discussed so that you could in cliche language say bring your whole self to the workplace but it's really being your whole self right and letting yourself just as my mom would say let it bloom you know whatever color it might be whichever way the leaves might be whichever color the leaves may be you know uh he howled and howled and howled and and he he couldn't believe that there could be this kind of world as well he just couldn't believe it you know he's fortunately he's moved to another place and he's very very happy there but again uh, he was lucky to have that information there isn't enough out there far from enough out there for people to to you know know that they can turn to certain places certain organizations certain other you know to just feel comfortable so i think what i would like to ask over here is that do you have any suggestions of groups that people can access so you talk about the lgbtq job fair 
I didn't know about that. I think that's amazing. Is that something that happens on an annual basis? Is it in every city? Is it in one place? Where can you find information on that? So there is, the, as far as this one goes, the first edition was actually in July 2019 in Bangalore. They came to Delhi last year, Feb, actually just a few days, a few weeks before the lockdown. They were really lucky. And there were over a thousand people seeking jobs from the community, over a thousand. You could have pent up, uh, yes. uh, you know, demand as such, you know, but there, uh, this year, it will be online on May, I think, third and fourth or fourth, fifth. It's Pride Circle, uh, people can find uh, that out. Now, there are many other groups. Uh, for example, if you're trans, uh, there's the Mitra Trust, which is based in Delhi. It's run by, you see my, you met Rudrani, Rudrani yes. Chetri, who acted yes. in uh, the color, uh, the last color. Rudrani runs that. It's it's the Mitra Trust. You can get a lot of help on uh, on issues of uh, transition, mental health, etc. She also runs a modeling agency because, as she says, even trans people there's nothing unusual. I mean, even trans people want to be models. You know, like everyone wants to wear clothes and you know. Things and they like know that. how to do the best makeup. They actually yeah, know how perhaps. to do the best makeup. So yeah. yeah, but actually it's something that she said when we met, when she talked about this, she said most trans people identify themselves as women. And it's the one thing, the if they were woman, to dress yeah, as men, thing. yeah, so if they were to dress as men, nobody would probably even be able to see the difference, but because they like to dress as women, um, that's when they become visible in this particular identity. And this is where they put down. So she said that this is about empowering them to say, you know, we will have a fashion show. We have a modeling agency where they get to dress the way that they want to. And I just thought it was the most wow. amazing thing that she said, you know, I yeah. absolutely love her for her work. So uh, what did you say that particular group is called again? That's Charles? called the Mitra Trust. The Mitra Trust. The Mitra, -T -T Mitra Trust, yes. Okay. Yeah. And so we will actually have, put that in the description on the um, on the video. Then so obviously there is it. the Hamsafar Trust, which is the oldest out of Bombay. And they have an office in Delhi, but you can connect with them. They have mental health experts, etc. also who are attached to the organization. They deal with a lot of issues on HIV as well. And during the pandemic, they were finding ways to deliver medicine, uh, the HIV medicine that is you know, that you require to take. Uh, to people's homes, which we were doing it in some of the cities, which was quite an amazing thing uh, during the lockdown. Uh, then, uh, so Hamsafar is there. Then there's the HIV AIDS Alliance, which is again based in Delhi. Uh, and they, uh, they again do work across, even mental health is one of the areas they look at. There's AHF, which uh, support a lot of people when it comes to safe sex, STDs and STIs. And again, uh, when it comes to that, uh, quite a few people have both identity issues and uh, they also have issues and fears of carrying STIs and STDs. So there are counselors attached on there. It's a very well-funded uh, organization. About. Then when you go, I don't know exactly where, uh, uh, which part of Gujarat this, uh, is Manvendra's Govil's, uh, uh, who's the prince? who had come out in opera when Fred also featured him uh, years ago. It's called the Lakshya Trust, you'll find it online. Online, They do a lot of work like that. There is a- uh... Tell me something, um, is there a group, a support group for parents of gay children? Yeah. Because I know that yeah. we're talking about a lot of young people who are coming out and they need the support, but I think a lot of times Sweet parents God. need help. So it's called so Sweet I think the Sweet Car, Rainbow Parents, and uh, they're wonderful. Could you ask them? I would have forgotten. Uh, so they're based out of Bombay, but they have a network now of parents coming on board from across the country. But really location in today's world doesn't immediately, uh, it's not an immediate need, I would say. Mm. Uh, so there's Aruna Desai, uh, who's a co-founder, does a lot of work. There's Chitra Palekar, uh, again, who's an actor and her daughter, is lesbian based in uh, Australia now. So Chitra uh, and Aruna 
quite often take the calls and they have helped parents, uh, they've helped children. Uh, I know at least in recent times, in the last four or five months, that they must have saved at least five or six kids and would have helped at least five or six parents as a result um, in, in dealing with the truth, for the parents to deal with the truth of their children, of, of, of who they are. Uh, so, so they are a very good group to reach out to Swikar Rainbow Parents. Then, uh, and of course, like that. then there is your amazing lit fest that you have, the queer and inclusive yeah. lit fest. Yeah, which I mean, is, it's, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's a space for everyone. I mean, actually, it's just the, it, we just reverse at the lit fest uh, the dominance or the power structure gets reversed. We are not heterophobic. That's why there isn't a word. Like heterophobia mm -hmm. as yet. Uh, you know, we're more accepting of heterosexuals. Uh, we're more respectful and accepting of parents, you know. Thank you, which and, is why you allowed people like me to come. <laughs> no, no, <laughs> not at all. So we look at we look at intersections because it's it's almost like, you know, wasn't like that, right? Shylock you cut someone, they're gonna bleed, they're gonna feel pain. You have a heartbreak, you can fall in love with someone, you can fall out of love, you can have domestic violence, you can have great sex. Uh, you have you have just so many uh, things that are absolutely similar. So we look at it from the queer and inclusive, which is why. So we often look at women in particular because there's so many common things that they go through in terms of a, just the patriarchal structure the family structure, the power equations in a family. It's not very different. So that's where we are coming from. So it's safe in that sense that you can get a lot of information. You can understand many things because people use history, they use literature, they use mythology, which you're anyway an expert on. Uh, so there's just so many things that are used, visual media, cinema, to tell us stories that we don't see also. There are not short films that we don't see. And those are very, so I, I would tell a lot of people who want to feel comfortable, follow the Kashish Film Festival, uh, follow what uh, the Queer Chronicles does out of Chennai, because they also organize a film festival uh, out of, you know, and they organize conversations uh, as well. It makes you feel more comfortable. I think you just get to know many more lives, you know, and uh, that itself is reassuring, you know, it can, it can create, a sense of self, a sense of solidarity, even without personally knowing the person. You know, so, Anita? so yeah, I was just saying that for all the resources that Sharif has given, when we think about going to a counselor, especially about our sexual identity, make sure that the counselor is somebody who is an ally to the LGBTQ community. It is not true that every therapist, psychologists yeah, out there. They are, yeah, they would be part of the same society, the same stereotype. There's something known as conversion therapy where people are trying to convert people. So a lot of times these organizations will have a list of people. Like in London, we have something called the pink therapy, uh, where they have therapists who basically uh, are somebody that, you know, they have been uh, that they have been looked at and seen that they are supporters of the LGBT community, they will be allies. So it is very important and it is very helpful to go to a therapist, but please make sure that they are somewhere, it could be on their website, it could be through a friend, it could be through those agencies, that they are actually allies of the community, uh, because it's not true that every therapist oh, yeah. is safe. Um, so make sure of that. Uh, and so I, can I that. add something? Yeah. Anika, can I please? Sorry. Uh, because, you know, I think also a lot of youngsters who are online and not youngsters, even I, I mean, okay, I'm young. But, uh, <laughs> but even on Instagram, you just have to do LGBTQ mental health. You get a list of queer run mental health groups where they have queer affirmative uh, mental health experts. There are a few heterosexual experts who also accept it as, uh, uh, you know, supportive or understanding. And I mean, they see the whole rainbow, you know, they don't see any problems with the rainbow. Also interestingly, which something that can give us heart 
This is not only what uh, the judge during the 377 order, uh, Indu Malhotra had said that history owes us an apology, but just a few days ago, last week in Chennai, a lesbian couple was protected by the courts. The, the judge itself said that I'm getting over my preconceived notions and as assigned parents and the couple to go to a queer affirmative therapy for them to understand. Now, if I think let us, these small little incidences and occasions are the ones which we can you know, hold on to in terms of hope and I think uh, that is why it's important for the more and more community to go into social media is largely safe. There are lists, there are organizations, there are groups also uh, which deal with other identities, but they're queer, like the Queer Muslim Project. Then people from the Northeastern region, they have the Chinky Homer Project, they have Yaol. They have such groups which are dealing with the multiple identities because uh, a, a, a person coming from, let's say, Manipur, or uh, Nagaland or any of the seven sister states and they come to Delhi, they also face racism. They also become a minority for where they come from, but it's added to their sexual identity, which becomes that much more heavy to deal with in terms of it. Same with the queer Muslim, same with all of these. So there's a lot out there and people should make full use you know, of it. That's, yeah. that's the freedom we have. Yeah. I think yeah. that's really, really good advice. Anvita, did you want to give us a piece of advice just to um, bring yeah. the session to an end? <laughs> no, I have no advice. I think we've heard <laughs> such amazing things. Um, just, you know, a couple of things that I wanted to add was, uh, it is as difficult as Sharif was saying for parents, the coming out process is as much for the parents as it is for the person. Obviously more difficult for the parents, but you know, the parents also have to undo their preconceived notions of weddings for their children, uh, taking the partner to a family dinner. How do you, you know, disclose to the Masi and the Chachi and the Mami that, you know, who is going to come as the dinner date uh, with your child. So it is not easy. So the sensitivity holds true for them as well. You know, they, they have to go through their journey and their preconceived no notions in some ways. Um, so if we can support them as well uh, in some ways. Also the coming out is very difficult because we have to think about everything feels at risk. You know, Sharif spoke about your career might be at risk because people in office might accept you. Your religion might be at risk. You know, you grow up just because you're gay doesn't mean you're no longer Muslim or you don't believe yeah. in going to the mosque or you don't, um, you know, believe in your Allah or Islam or whatever. Uh, that might be at risk. Your favorite cousin might not want to be you know, your favorite cousin any longer. Your parents might want to reject you. Your best friend might be awkward. So how much is at risk at this coming out really? And, and how important is this identity, the congruence of it, that you are willing to risk all of it? You know, I just, if people could just understand how disconnected life feels, uh, and you want that matching and, you know, like bringing your whole self in, as Sharif was saying. Um, and that is why you're willing to take the risk of upheaval of all these identities. And more and more people are accepting. There are a lot of religious groups that are accepting, um, I, I know, as in here and otherwise. So please do access those groups. Um, and finally, um, I just want to say that uh, I had a funny story with when he was saying that if you are in the community and you are, uh, you know, thriving and surviving in the community, sometimes we have stereotypes about our own community in some ways. The first time I read lesbian psychologies, I thought, no men, there's going to be no domestic violence. It's going to be all pretty and oh, fine. Yeah. They're all women. And then I suddenly read a chapter on um, you know, the fact that there was domestic violence within the lesbian community or do, there's domestic violence within the gay community. And we think those things don't exist because, you know, the whole, the patriarchal structures might be missing or whatever. Uh, 
but there are as many issues within the LGBTQ community, which might be around um, isms of, you know, like Sharif was saying about phobias or stereotypes, or the same way might be stereotypes within or boxes within the community. Um, so don't feel like you have to fit into one mold. Sexuality, as we now know it, is very fluid. So get the support, get explore it, figure out what's your identity. You know, that in the mindfulness that Sharif was talking about, finding that individual uh, space to figure out what's yours and identifying that's where you feel most connected in some ways. So that would just what I would leave everyone with. Fantastic. Um, I think I'm going to go back to that point as the ending point as well, because, um, you know, we were talking about self-mindfulness. I think that's what Sharif called it. Is that right, Sharif? You call it self-mindfulness, that wonderful yeah. thing of self-love and just understanding yourself. And as both Anvita and Sharif said at the beginning, that, you know, everywhere you look, there isn't any kind of model to follow. There isn't any kind of gay love, gay couple uh, model that is put out for you in public to follow and say, this is what I will look up to. Everything out there is heteronormative and you are fighting battles just trying to find yourself. So what we suggest is that when you actually go into this idea of feeling really miserable and not understanding how you want to take this further, whether you want to accept this, um, this identity of yours, you know you are gay, but you don't know how to accept it. The best thing that you can do for yourself is just for a little bit of time every day, have a little fantasy time. So give yourself time to fantasize. I know that for a lot of young men, for a lot of young women, it's really hard to see themselves physically in a relationship with another person of the same sex because they don't see it anywhere else. So there are no pictures depicting it. There's no kind of visuals depicting that. And you don't know how it would even look. So our advice is go out and actually fantasize about it. Don't block it out of your mind. Don't say to yourself, oh my God, no, this is wrong. You're in private. This is happening inside your head. Nobody else can access it. Give yourself the time to think it through. Visualize yourself with somebody that you really want to be with. If it's the same sex person, visualize yourself with that same sex person. Visualize yourself in a state of intimacy, whether it is lovemaking, whether it is conversations, whether it's hugging or holding hands, whatever it is. See it through like a movie in your head and do this every single day for yourself, just as a little bit of private time as your own personal, completely free therapy. And I think that with that, is there anything, Sharif, that you want to add just before we bring the video to an end? Yeah, just one thing I'd like to say is, uh, picking up on what Anvita was talking about, about parents. I think we need to be patient with them and we need to have as many conversations with them. We need to, to, to make them, uh, you know, we need to share information with them as well. We need to make them aware uh, because it's it's like a coming out journey for them as well, because ultimately they have to, when they engage with the world around them, they need to feel as proud of their children as you feel proud of your sexuality. So I think that's something we, we all need to, because we are the kind of people who want our family around us. I think that um, that's really good advice, Sharif. Thank you. Anvita, thank you for all of your advice as always. I hope, I really hope that this is one time when everybody out there who's either within the gay community or not within the gay community, that you really do take something away from this because I think it is extremely important. I hope that this is brought home to you, just the kind of struggles that other people exactly like yourself, but with a slightly different idea of love, are facing and I don't think it's fair on anybody to have to go through that so please do take away at least a couple of lessons from our video today if you enjoyed the video leave a like leave a comment I am available for questions on info.seema.anand at gmail.com Anvita if you wish to get in touch with Anvita on um, she's 
Sorry, it's anvita.madanvehel yeah. at gmail.com for if you are interested yeah. in counseling. Um, and it will be in the text below. And Sharif, if anybody needs to get in touch with you, what, where it's, do they reach out to you? It's, it's yes, they can just, I think, if they search the net for my name, uh, I'm on Facebook, I'm on Instagram, but otherwise they can email me at sdrangnaker, R A N G N K R, at gmail.com. Super. As Anita said, it'll all be in the descriptions anyway. In the meantime, do take care of yourselves, stay safe, and we'll see you next week.